One World Sky Team Star Alliance. In an industry as competitive as commercial aviation, it's hard to believe that these multi-airline teams, or so-called airline alliances, exist and can cooperate while preserving their self-interests. But what even are these airline alliances, and what exactly is their purpose in the industry? Welcome back to Globetrotting. Do subscribe if you are new for much more aviation analysis. Before we dive into the intricacies of airline alliance logistics, let's get first to know airline alliances themselves. As stated previously, the three major alliances are One World Sky Team and Star Alliance. All three alliances were chronologically founded very close together. The earliest was Star Alliance, founded in 1997 by United Air Canada, Lufthansa, SAS and Thai Airways. Today, Star Alliance is the largest of the three by a significant margin. Next was One World, founded in 1999 by British Airways, American Airlines, Cathay Pacific and Qantas. Also among the founding members was now the non-existent Canadian Airlines, which was later purchased by Air Canada, merging it with Star Alliance. One World is currently the smallest of the three, although it is growing, with many airlines in discussions to join the company. Finally, Sky Team was founded just a year later, the year of 2000, by Air France, Delta, Aeromexico, and Korean Air. It is also worth noting that Sky Team also has the industry's sole cargo alliance as a bit of a fun fact, that being Sky Team Cargo. Now, on to why alliances were formed. You are likely familiar with airline alliances if you fly often and participate in airline mile programs. This is because a major point of cooperation between airlines of the same alliance is sharing frequent flyer benefits. Therefore, miles accumulated with one airline can be cashed in with any other airline in the alliance. This is useful for frequent flyers who can spend their miles on numerous routes to and from many destinations around the world. A person could, for example, use accumulated miles with Sky Team to fly from Los Angeles to Paris on Delta, and then from Paris to Seoul on Korean Air. These shared benefits, though, don't just apply to flight miles, but to lounges and other important air travel services that customers have come to know and love. Because of their convenience for the customer, these incentives for frequent flyers are ultimately beneficial to the business of all airlines involved. Another way in which airlines of the same alliance cooperate is with code sharing, something we will be explaining here on Globetrotting in the coming months. Code sharing in the commercial aviation industry is put when one airline will designate a certain flight as their own, although it is flown by a separate partner airline. This allows passengers to book flights on multiple airlines without the hassle of booking each flight with its respective airline. It saves a lot of time. For example, no United States-based airline currently operates non-stop flights from Los Angeles to Istanbul. But you can still book a flight to Istanbul via Delta Airlines. Delta will fly you to Paris and Sky Team partner Air France will take you the rest of the way. Or you can do the same with American Airlines, connecting via London Heathrow with One World, partnered with British Airways. Allied alliances capitalize on ease of use for customers of these shared flights and will split profits from the flight among themselves accordingly. Airline alliances don't just financially benefit customers, but airlines as well. Airlines of the same alliance will share all manners of resources with each other, such as ground crews and handling personnel. They can also collaborate on investments and purchases to achieve discounts. However, not everyone is on board with the concept of airline alliances. Some believe that reducing competition between airlines is just bad business and may bully smaller, non-alliance affiliated airlines out of the industry. Certainly, airline alliances reduce compensation. There's no question that they make life more difficult for airlines that either choose not to be a part of an alliance or aren't asked. And this was from Harry, a travel analyst for Forrester Research, sourced from the Seattle Times. What do you think? Are airline alliances good or bad for the industry as a whole? Should there be more of them or should the existing ones be broken up? And do you personally see any benefit to them? Let us know below in the comments. And as always, if you are new to Globetrotting, do be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications for lots more aviation analysis content to come.